we are able to ping from this device to PC1 because typing IP config on the local PC you can see the IP address is 10.0.0.249 the default gateway is 10.0.0.100 which is the 5406 on this device we configured its IP address as 10.0.2.2.5.2 and the default gateway as 10.0.2.100 which is the 5406. So at the moment the 5406 has two IP addresses. ten zero zero one hundred as well as ten zero two one hundred. With VNC I can now connect to ten zero two two five two. And notice there's the old IP address IP config again you can see that the IP address is now 10.0.2.2.5.2 and this device can ping 10.0.0.2.4.9 I'm going to use the command trace cert so that we can see how traffic is flowing you can see that traffic firstly goes to 10.0.2.100 which is the 5406 acting as our router and then is inter VLAN routed to VLAN 1 and the traffic is sent to 10.0.0.249 so we have successfully configured inter VLAN routing between VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 inter VLAN routing has been enabled on the 5406 so just to summarize the required steps we firstly had to enable inter VLAN routing on the 5406 by typing the command IP routing. So show run. We had to enable IP routing on the 5406. We then had to configure the relevant VLANs. By default VLAN 1 exists but we had to create VLAN 2. We had to specify which ports belong to which VLANs. So as an example port A1 is configured in VLAN 1 but notice port A5 has been put into VLAN 2. We then had to configure IP addresses for the relevant VLANs on the 5406 to enable inter VLAN routing. These IP addresses are the default gateways of the devices. So this IP address 10.0.0.100 is the default gateway of 10.0.0.249 the PC that I'm currently working on this IP address 10.0.2.100 is the default gateway of PC1 and you can see that over here IP config on PC1 you can see its default gateway is 10.0.2.100 so that's how you configure inter VLAN routing on E-series devices so we've successfully configured VLAN 2 and put PC1 this PC into VLAN 2 and enable inter VLAN routing between our recording PC 10.0.0.249 connected to the Cisco router and PC1. The device that's doing the inter VLAN routing is the 5406. Now let's put this PC, PC2, into VLAN 10. Now this gets a little bit more complicated. To do this we need to configure port 24 as an untagged port on edge 1. So that port will only belong to VLAN 10. However, the link between Edge 1 and the router, our 5406, needs to be configured as a tagged link. So this interface needs to be tagged for VLAN 10. And this interface needs to be tagged for VLAN 10. We need to allow VLAN 10 across this link. And to do that, we're going to create this link as a tagged link or tagged interface. Now we can get away with leaving VLAN 1 as untagged or you could configure VLAN 1 as tagged. It's up to you. Now to do that we need to enable tagging on port 1 of edge 1 and port A2 on the 5406. VLAN 1 can remain untagged on this link but VLAN 10 needs to be tagged to allow these two switches to communicate the additional VLAN to each other. So port 1 will have VLAN 1 untagged 
the 5406 will have port 82 untagged, but VLAN 10 will be tagged on both of these ports. Now those of you from a Cisco environment once again, or those of you who have worked on A-series switches, VLAN 1 is known as the native VLAN or untagged VLAN on this link or port. So port 1 will have VLAN 1 is untagged, or in other terminology, the native VLAN. Once again, tomato, tom tomato, whichever term you prefer. But the other VLANs, in this case VLAN 10, will be tagged. So once again, those of you from Cisco or A-Series, this interface would be known as a trunk. Be careful with that term once again. On E-Series, a trunk means link aggregation or ether channel. This is called a tagged link, not a trunk in E-Series terminology. So this is the 5406 10 0, 0, acting as our router. We're going to configure Edge 1 as a Layer 2 switch with no routing. So let's Telnet to the switch. So Telnet 10 0, 0, 101. You can see we're working on Edge 1. Show Run shows only our basic configuration. So we're going to create VLAN 10. And then we're going to say untagged. And we need to specify port 24. Just before I do that, I'm going to change the IP address of this PC once again. At the moment, the PC has IP address 10.0.0.250. And we need to change that to put the PC into VLAN 10. So once again, go into Control Panel, go to Network Connections, Local Area Connection, this needs to be configured in VLAN 10 and the default gateway is going to be our 5406 router. So once again, default gateway 10, 0, 10, 100. Click OK. Our VNC connection will break once again. But we have now configured this PC with IP address 10, 0, 10, 250, default gateway being the router. So the router is now going to have three IP addresses, one for VLAN 1, one for VLAN 2, and one for VLAN 10. Hence, this PC's default gateway is going to be 10, 0, 10, 100. The next step is we need to put this interface 24 into VLAN 10. So we need to make the interface untagged. So there we go. On VLAN 10, we're going to untag port 24. So show run. You can see that port 24 is untagged for VLAN 10. In other words, this port belongs to VLAN 10. We also need to specify a tagged interface. So we're going to specify port 1 or interface 1 as tagged for VLAN 10. So port 1 on the switch is going to send tagged frames for VLAN 10. So those of you coming from a Cisco background once again, you'll see that the way that you configure this is very different to Cisco. Here, rather than going onto the interface and putting it into VLAN 10, as you would do on Cisco switches as well as A series switches, here you configure VLAN 10 and you say that it's untagged on a specific interface, so interface 1. We need to do something similar on the router. So at the moment, show run once again, we have got VLAN 1 configured and VLAN 2, but we haven't configured VLAN 10. So we need to configure the router or 5406 for VLAN 10 and we need to send it as a tagged frame across this link. So VLAN 10 tagged A2. So on our PC, IP address 10.0.0.249, PC connected to the Cisco router which is connected in turn to the 5406 router on VLAN 1, can we ping 10, 0, 10, 250? 
Now at the moment, notice we're getting an unreachable message from a device with IP address 10.0.0.100, which is the 5406. And the reason for that is I need to configure an IP address on VLAN 10. So VLAN 10 needs an IP address of 10.0.10.100. With a relevant mask. Let's try again. And as you can see, the ping is successful. If we trace to that address, you can see that it firstly goes to 10.0.0.100, which is the 5406 acting as our router, and then it goes to device 10.0.10.250. So we have successfully configured into VLAN routing between VLAN 1 and VLAN 10. It's important to realize that the frames are untagged from our PC to the router and then the traffic is sent as a tag frame across this link between our two switches and then goes as an untagged frame to our PC. Let's see if we can open up a VNC connection to this IP address 10.0.10.250. So in VNC, 10, 0, 10, 250. Put in the password. And as you can see, we have a connection to this device. There's the old IP address, 10, 0, 0, 250. IP config now shows me that the IP address is 10, 0, 10, 250. And once again, just to show you the reverse process, which we know works already, we can ping 10, 0, 0, 249 from this PC. So we're able to ping from this device through Edge 1, our 2610 switch, across the tag link to the 5406, which does the inter-VLAN routing and sends the traffic as an untagged frame to the Cisco router, which in turn sends it to our PC, 10.0.0.249. So we have successfully configured inter-VLAN routing between VLAN 10 and VLAN 1.